my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. Jesus, you made your disciples your friends. You make us your friends. You make me your friend. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. Friends open up to each other. Friends communicate. Jesus communicates with us. He talks to us. Or he's open to conversation. And in every friendship and in every conversation, it takes two people. It's up to us to respond. It's up to us to say yes to that friendship. Recently, I heard a story about a young man who had gone to a Catholic high school, and after high school, he left the faith. He said that to him, the Catholic faith was a big, thou shalt not, you know, you shall not do this, you shall not do that. And it just seemed too negative to him. Too limiting. And so in college, and then later in medical school, because he would become a doctor, he totally disconnected from God and from the Catholic faith and uh, socially lived a pretty wild life. Um, lifestyle that we could certainly describe as loose living. Yes, he still was able to get good grades in school. But his social life, he did not exercise temperance. Particularly in drink and also with regards to the virtue of chastity. Which is part of temperance. And he said that for a while he felt free. He felt happy. To be, do, to be doing whatever he felt like, whenever he felt like, with whomever he felt like. He felt free from the bonds of the thou shalt nots of the Catholic religion. But after some time, a couple of years or so, something happened to him one day. He describes it as something very sudden. But all of a sudden, he began to look around him at all the people living the way that he was, and he began to experience a huge sense of pity. And he doesn't know why he hadn't seen it before, but, but all of a sudden he began to see it. And he saw so much deprivation. So many people, particularly young people, young professionals and people in college, living all the same lifestyle. And it just, for him, he saw it all with great pity. And so, he's not really sure what to do about this, but he ends up switching jobs, not for that reason, for, but just for professional reasons. He, he ends up working with, with another doctor who is Catholic, and they become friends. And, you know, they talk about the faith, they talk about morality, and and at first, they have very different opinions on what is the best way to live. 
But this leads this young man, this young doctor, to question even more how he has been living since he left high school. And one day, he was in the chapel of the hospital because the hospital was Catholic. And he wasn't really sure why he was there. He didn't think he believed in God, but yet there he was. And he told God, God, if you exist, this is your last chance I'm going to give you in my life. If you give me a clear sign, a very clear sign, then I'll believe in you and do whatever you ask. A little bit later, I'd say about half an hour, the priest preached in his homily about the prodigal son. And the prodigal son is the very famous parable that Jesus teaches us about the father who is so merciful that he forgives his son who had wasted his entire inheritance on loose living, on partying, on not living chastity. He wastes his father's money and he comes back. He doesn't think he he's worthy to be his father's son anymore. And he asks to be a servant and the father says, no, no, no. In fact, the father celebrates the return of his son. In fact, it parallels nicely with the gospel we read at the beginning of this meditation. Jesus says, I call you friends, no longer slaves. The son in the parable of the, of, of the prodigal son, also known as the parable of the merciful father, says that he is not worthy to be called his son anymore, yet the father doesn't pay any attention to that. Jesus says, you are my friends. This is amazing. God wants to have a personal relationship with us. Anyway, back to the story. So the priest preaches about the parable of the prodigal son. And, and the young doctor experienced something that he can't explain. He said, I understood so deeply that God loved me. And he wasn't asking me for anything. He just wanted to love me. And what's implied here is that he had to let himself be loved by God. You and I, we have to let ourselves be loved by God. To recognize and to accept the way God loves us and the relationship he's asking of us that he wants to have with us. Yes, this will require effort and, you know, yeah, following commandments, of course. Yes, it does, but, but we can't start there. We are, otherwise, we're going to misunderstand them. Is God wants to love me. Now, he wants to love me on his terms, not on my terms, but, but he wants to love me, and, and his terms are much better than mine. Do you and I allow ourselves to be loved? Do we allow ourselves to be forgiven? Do we go to confession? Do we tell our God that we're sorry? So we can accept that love, accept that forgiveness. So I find that quote very powerful. It's a very simple quote. But this young doctor says, he wanted to love me. He wasn't asking for a list of to-dos. Didn't give him the Ten Commandments, you know, right then and there. He wanted to love me. And the commandments will be a consequence of love. When we realize how much Jesus loves me, let me turn to you, Lord. Jesus, when I realize how much you love me, then yes, I'll be willing to do whatever you ask. I'll do all the commandments. I'll do whatever. I will try. 
because you love me and I want to love you back. This is a common human experience, right? When you love your spouse or you love your mother or father or your best friend or a sibling, like think about it. Think of someone specific that you love deeply and that you are willing to do anything for. But sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it requires effort. Sometimes it requires getting less sleep. Sometimes it re requires not doing other things that you may enjoy on a superficial level more. But it's worth it. Yeah, for that person it's worth it. Jesus, for you it's worth it. And so, this is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. Yes, Lord, help me love the others. And it starts with realizing how you love me. So each one of us can ask, how has Christ loved each one of us? How has he loved you? And if we have a hard time thinking of something, then we're not aware enough. and We're probably too selfish. We're probably not grateful enough. Let's look to the Gospels. Let's look at every breath of life that you take. Look at the sun rising. Look at your family. Look at the faith that we have. And we will realize how much God loves us. And we will love him back and love others out of love for him. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.